Hey everybody, thank you so much for clicking on this video. So today we are talking all things small business. I do get a lot of questions from other coaches and I've gotten like requests to make a video like this in one way or another. So I recently went on Instagram and I asked you guys just to help me kind of format this video because I didn't really know what you wanted to know. So some things we're gonna talk about today, time management, finances, branding, and growth. I think that's it. Yeah, but let's first start with what my business is. Like, what do I actually offer? Because I don't think a lot of you know. So my business is Justina Aircole Training, and I offer three different services. Workout classes, personal training, and nutrition coaching. My most popular service within that is my Fit Club membership. It is a monthly unlimited membership where you get access to all of my live classes, my on-demand classes, progressive work workout programs, a community forum, and then Fit Club Fridays. Fit Club Fridays are 15 minute consults every single Friday where you can book a session with me and talk about literally anything you want. Fix your form, goals, nutrition, the sky's the limit. So that's the main overview of my business and it's just me. <laughs> I do all of it. And my actual business, like if we're talking about like an LLC, has been around since October of 2020. But just to give you a quick overview of like my time in fitness, I started doing group fitness in 2015, working for different studios. I got my personal training cert through NASA in 2018. Very early 2020, like pre-pandemic, I did this like beta class of what is now my core class that I offer. And that was just me, like it wasn't through a studio, I just rented space and oh my God, I would like lug like 12 yoga mats in a giant suitcase on the subway every week. Good times. I knew one day I would laugh about that. And then, like I said, in October of 2020, I officially started my LLC. But honestly, like March 14th, I started offering virtual classes because I was like, we need it somewhere. So that's an overview of what I do. Let's talk about time management. So one of the questions I got was about work-life balance, especially in a society that expects like constant content drops. So something that has helped me a lot has been to set a really clear schedule with my content and with my teaching so that I have really clear boundaries. So in terms of like actually working with clients, I only work Monday through Friday. Every once in a while I'll teach a class on a Saturday or a Sunday, but I never see private clients on weekends. I never do editing, I never do filming. I have just ended up creating Saturday and Sunday as like my relaxation time. I also no longer work with people prior to like 8 a.m. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I have any clients who meet at six or seven anymore. And I won't work with people after 7 p.m. unless it's like a rare occasion. That I will say is something that I have earned, especially in the fitness industry, where like most people work, there's like a saying you were like five to nine because most of the time you're training people outside their work schedule. But I've grown in a way where I don't need to do that anymore. So I am going to own it. <laughs> And I just wanna say it's a really important boundary for me because it, it has really ensured that I like have the mental and emotional capacity to still like spend time and listen to my husband at the end of the night. And then the other thing that I said that I've made really clear is my content schedule. So YouTube, I post three times a week. Monday, it's like a short and I just reuse that from TikTok. So it's like no extra work. Wednesday, I drop into educational video and then Saturday is something more like sassy or fun or random. Instagram, on Sundays, I just post my schedule. On Mondays, again, I reuse something from TikTok, some kind of like funny reel. Wednesdays, I have a post that's, ed that's educational that also like, it's like a shorter form content of whatever I posted on YouTube. And then that's usually it. If I wanna post another thing that's just like random, I have the ability to. Um, TikTok, I'm actually like, I go through spurts where I'm like really on top of it and then really bad at it. I'm really bad at it right now, but usually I try to post just once a day. And then in terms of filming, I've kind of developed this system where like I batch Instagram and TikTok content one to two times a month. And then honestly, YouTube, I like, I love YouTube. It's my creative outlet. So it, I've tried in the past, like batching, like all of my videos, like filming all of them in one day, but it, I don't know, it like kind of sucks the joy out of it for me. So I'll usually film one to two times per week and then edit three to four times per week because I've done this new thing where I do not film or edit the last week of every single month just to kind of like give myself a breather. And that's been working out really well. All of that shows you that I have set in stone really clear schedules so that I have really clear boundaries. So I hope that was helpful. <laughs> All right, let's talk about finances. So someone wants to know, how do I do my taxes? I hire a CPA. <laughs> One of my biggest fears is getting audited. So I would just rather like have someone else do it for me because I really don't understand it. Also side note, obviously like 
I'm an LLC, so it's more complicated. But even when I was just um, like me, like why don't we ever learn how to do our own taxes? Why is that not a thing taught in school? Anyway, I hired someone and I highly recommend you do too. How do I track my finances? Okay, so everyone's gonna make fun of me for this, I feel like, um, because everyone's always like, use QuickBooks, use QuickBooks, it's so easy. I use an Excel sheet. <laughs> I'll, I'll like put a screenshot up of it right here. Honestly, the reason I do this is because I have had in the past such a really terrible relationship with money and I'm still fixing that now. It's not that I've been bad with money, it's that money scares the crap out of me, or not anymore, we're taking that off the table, but money used to scare the crap out of me. Like I would just always be anxious, like do I have enough? Can I pay my bills? Am I making enough? Like it would get to the point where I would be terrified to open my bank account, it was very irrational. So. By tracking it all manually myself, it forces me every single day to look at my finances and it forces me to take back the power and like money is my friend. It is not my enemy. It is not scary. It is there to support me and to help me. So that is something that I have done. And I also think it's a little bit easier for me because I just pay my taxes quarterly. So like I already have it set in stone. Like it's a scheduled payment, what I pay every quarter. So yeah, I feel like it's like, I'm just kind of tracking any expenses and then like what I'm making. Any physical receipts I have, which are pretty few and far between, I just put in this little like filing cabinet that I have down by my feet. And then any electronic receipts I just make sure that they're in my business account and I'll just like mark it as a receipt in Gmail and it'll go right there. So if, oh my God, if I ever get audited, knock on all of the wood, I have everything in place. <laughs> Let's talk about retirement. So Kevin and I actually have a financial advisor, which you, you really don't need nowadays, like with all of the different electronic services and stuff that like you can invest, like you don't need one. I like having one. He actually like works with my parents too, just because like I'm not really into investing and like I would just rather someone else do it for me, but everyone's different. You do you. But something that you should absolutely have is an IRA. I've had one since maybe 2013. Kevin and I both just like put in the max amount every single year, which for a Roth IRA is $6,000. Unless you're like over 50, I think it's more. And then the, the other thing that I do have is like a solo K or a uni K. So basically if you are a single member LLC with no employees, you can basically create your own 401k. And it's like, you can invest, you can invest a lot more. Well, based off of what I make, because it's like a percent of what you make each year, you, I can invest a lot more than just the 6,000 every year, which is, which is great for me. Honestly, if you don't invest, you're not going to have anything for retirement because, um, social security is going to be gone y'all. All right. <laughs> and then finally, what are my streams of income? So the main way that I make income is through coaching or through my training business. So that includes nutrition, coaching, personal training, group classes on demand, like all of that. So all of that like is my main business. And that's gonna be like 75% of my income each month. So the next way that I make money is through YouTube and that's uh, in two different ways. The main way is through Google AdSense. So this is basically when you watch an ad on a video, I get like money. <laughs> And then the other way is through sponsorships. I don't take a ton of sponsorships and I've actually talked recently in a video all about different sponsorships and like how I decide to take them. Um, I'm also not a very big channel, so it's not a ton of money that people want to give me. So that's like a very small percentage, but we'll say that from YouTube, that's about 20% of my income each month, which is nothing to scoff at. And then there's three other like very rinky dink ways that I make money, <laughs> affiliate links. I'm lucky to make $50 a month through that maybe. So I don't even, it's like, oh, that was fun. That's extra money. I don't ever count on that. Instagram and TikTok. Um, TikTok, I make like nothing, like literally nothing. But also again, I don't try very hard over there. Um, Instagram has started paying you for reels and I usually make like 100 to $150 a month for that. And then the one other way that I sometimes make money, like maybe one class a month I'll do is through this company called Team Building. I specifically, my husband works for them. I specifically work for their like fitness department, which is called Strong Teams, but it's basically workout classes for like corporate companies and it's virtual. Obviously it's not as popular anymore, but during the pandemic, like the height of it, it was a very, very lucrative um, part of making money for me, which was great. So those other three things are like 5% and that's like kind of being generous. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit about branding. So one question that I got was how 
to make functional fitness your own brand. I think that but like before you jump to this question, you, you kind of need to figure out who your ideal client is and really go through all the steps to like create an ideal client avatar. It just so happened that like with my personal belief system around movement and the type of client that I was attracting and helping, functional fitness just kind of like worked in there. And then I obviously just like tweak things to make it more specific to me. I actually, I have it right here. There's a book that you absolutely should read if you are trying to build a business or, or a brand in general, but it's called Building a Story Brand. And this helped me so, so much in just really getting specific on like, what I offer, who I'm trying to attract, what is the problem I'm solving. So I highly recommend this. I'll leave it linked below. Oh, I guess that was the only branding question. I thought I was gonna get another. Let's move on to growth. Growth, first question, how to build a community. My number one advice to you is that it is not about the sale, it is about the relationship. You need to build trust. You need to find a common core issue. You need to provide a solution. It takes so much time. It takes so much energy. It takes a lot of free resources and a lot of time on your end. But if you want to build a community, like that's just kind of what it takes. Now, I can give you specifics of things that I do within my business to, you know, promote more of a community. One of the things that I love that I've offered within my business is Fit Club Friday. That really serves that like one-on-one -on -one relationship. And I think that that's really important for me in like retaining customers. Again, it's about the relationship and that potentially drives you to a sale. If we're thinking broader in terms of community, I still do offer live classes on Zoom where people can see each other. This not only provides people with accountability and proper form and all of that, but like we can all see each other and that kind of, it builds this sense of community. I also do an in-person class once a month. So that's building that community. And one of the things that I really make sure that I'm doing is that I'm responding to almost every single comment that I get on YouTube, every single message that I get on Instagram. You know, if someone has a question about form, I'll tell them to send me a video. Like, send me a video doing your push-up, DM it to me, I'll give you some feedback. Because again, it's about the relationship, not about the sale. And my end goal with all of these relationships isn't like, you're gonna give me your money, because that's not the point of my business. My po the point of my business is not to make money. The point of my business is to help people and educate people. And then I do need to make money, but that's not the number one pillar. That kind of got on a tangent, but community. Would you ever do a seminar for new personal trainers? No. <laughs> Honestly, I, 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 I don't want to be a business coach, or I don't want to be a coach for coaches. Like I, I just want to help people get stronger and move better and feel better. If you ever have like a specific question and you want to message me, feel free to do so, but I will never be like monetizing that as a business. How do you see yourself expanding your business? That's a great question. So I'm currently into my first year of my five-year plan. And without getting like too specific, the five-year plan is to build out Fit Club so that it's like an app or even just like, I'm not, I don't love my Wix platform. It gets the job done and I love how much like control I have over it. But there's like small things, like there's no search function for the videos. Come on Wix. The, the mobile version isn't great. Working toward Fit Club being an app or just more mobile friendly and also more financially accessible for everybody. Like I do think that for everything you get, $50 a month is an amazing value, but a lot of my members don't even come to the live classes. So they're just paying $50 a month for on-demand programs, which I do still think it's it's a great value, but I do know that like to compete with other bigger brands, I do have to bring that price down. So the goal is to make it two tiers where it's a higher price for like all of the things you get now and then a lower price for like just the on-demand stuff. I am actually working on this now, just like continuing to build out programs. Again, since so many of my members really do just join for the programs. I wanna make sure that they have tons of options that are really quality, including some kind of nutrition component within that, eventually bringing down the live classes a little bit. Right now I'm at five to six per week. And again, just with like, if we're talking about the ratio of Fit Club, let's say like each month I usually have about 100 members, only 25 of them, like a quarter of them actually come to the live classes. So really I don't have a business that is in the business of live virtual workouts. I have an on-demand business. So a lot of my shift in focus is gonna be toward serving and expanding that part of the business to better serve and acquire more of those customers since that's just kind of where things are headed now. And the reason that I, 
get more of those customers is continue to grow organically on social media because that is my main source of promotion. Um, unfortunately with that, that just takes time and consistency and patience. So I just have to like keep doing what I'm doing. And within five years, hopefully I um, have a little bit more of what I'm hoping for. All right, last one. How did I find coaching clients when I first started? I've talked about this recently in another video, but me personally, I had already worked in group fitness for like five years. And again, I was met with a pandemic that shut everything down. So as far as like my virtual stuff, that was really how I found everybody. It was just kind of like, I had this pool of people who didn't have other options and really liked me. And so they came over to me. But aside from that, I was already coaching people in person. I was doing personal training and some of those people found me from YouTube. Some were friends and family. Some had already taken my group fitness classes and wanted something a little bit more. So if you're just getting started and let's say like you, you don't have a social media presence or you don't currently teach somewhere else, friends and family, Word of mouth is gonna be key. Keep it really affordable at first. The best way to learn and grow is to just do it. Whew, all right. So that's all of it. Hopefully you guys found that helpful and interesting. While I, again, have no desire in like coaching other coaches, I do think that it's really interesting just hearing about other people's experiences because we can all learn from each other. And I think that there is a lot of value in looking at what someone else is doing that is maybe aspirational to you or even similar to you and going, wow, that's great. That's how they do that. Here's how I'm gonna do it and make it my own and make it better. Any questions, leave them down below, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out and I will see you all in the next one.